So, episode 5 of my cosplay vlog. As you can see, this is a big pile of support material. Which means, I completed the chest plate. After three day, seven, about 70 hours, uh, chest plate was finally completed um, last night. Uh, I feel like there's more support material than the chest plate. So, ta-da! I'm using a... Like, I don't think you can't really see it, but I have a elastic straps holding it on. Uh, that's not how I'm going to be holding it uh, together. I will be using magnets. I'll be using elastic. I will be using a strap to connect the uh, part under the arm, but I'm going to be using magnets to connect the shoulder pieces. So all in all, um, I like it uh, very much. It feels kind of short honestly, but it's also a little bit wide. I can't really move my arms further than this. Like I, so. Oh, all in all. Uh, it turned out really well. Um, there's definitely a lot of standing to do, especially under, uh, like the pecs and everything else. Um, where, basically wherever the support material can make contact. Uh, with the model, um, so there, this one's gonna this one's gonna require a lot more cleanup than the helmet. But uh, yeah, um, I wore this to work. <laughs> but uh, I like it. Um, definitely rescaling it. Um, give it a lot better fit because I don't know how I'd be able to move my arms forward. Um, I also got uh, some padding. Oh, some, that's more support material. I also got some padding to uh, uh, put inside the helmet, also inside the armor. Uh, this will set off, like once I get padding in, it'll set off my chest a little bit, um, which m will provide me a little bit more range of movement. Um, if I have to, I can also use a heat gun to warp the inside corners. Um, to bend these in a little bit more so that I can have more range of movement because this works actually this is where it's actually stopping me so if I want a little bit more range of movement I can always use a heat gun to warp um, on this side I did break it a little bit um, because bending my arms or oh, sorry it's actually on the side uh, right here uh, underneath um, I did break it a little bit um, that's because trying to bend my arms forward uh, ended up putting too much pressure on the chest plate. The only little bit of concern is that it, it meets the width, and with the chest plate, it'll fit snugly on in the back. But part of it just seem feels a little short because this is this is supposed to be the sternum. Like this is like this is the bottom of the pec. This is supposed to be where the, the sternum sits, and my sternum is like right here <laughs> so this needs to go down a little bit but I don't know if uh, this needs to go down a little bit but I don't know if uh, it'll actually work out that way we'll have to see once I get the full armor set in uh, so because like this this is their the layer of muscle that goes underneath and everything else um, if you're just talking about like anatomy and how it fits the form so uh, there's also a second chest. There's also a second piece that goes pretty much on the abs. It goes right here below the uh, thing, and then you'll have the cod piece, which comes around here. The, I'm trying to de uh, minimize the gap I have between the chest and the cod piece for the ab area, abdomen, because uh, I want to create uh, like a like a pattern for the tech suit that goes underneath, that goes between the armor, because I don't want it to just be armor, spandex, armor. I want something to go between here. Same thing with the uh, the calf armor, uh, the thigh armor as well. Because the thigh ar oh. the thigh armor uh, comes along the side, outside of the, the leg, but it doesn't actually, there's nothing actually on the inside. So I'm going to create something to put on the inside uh, that will create a better, uh, a better look. Um, so, uh, I'm going to, as soon as I clean up this mess, back to this mess, 
uh, I'm going to start printing, um, I think I'm going to start with the legs next. I, I know I was going to try and print all the pieces, like the back and everything else, but I think I'm going to start going on with the legs. Sorry if my voice is a bit off, I haven't been feeling well today. Um, but, uh, yeah, weather here in Austin is crazy, and I'm from Florida, so, uh, being cold all the time. And people from the north are like, oh, it's not cold. It's like, it's cold for me, I'm in Florida. Um, so, uh, yeah, so once I get all this, uh, cleaned up, so the big support, uh, crinkly noises, uh, once I get all this clean up, I'm thinking I'm going to start doing the legs next. Um, cause it's just because I don't know. Right now, I'm kind of hitting a little financial snag um, with my job. It just doesn't pay enough. And the new job that I just interviewed at isn't very promising. Um, I wish I, could, I wish I had the funds to throw into this, but I mean, just right now, I might have to table this for a while which is my biggest concern because with the print times that I projected print times that I got for all for all the pieces I have all the pieces projected down to the back plate being three and a half days the every other piece is going to be less than a day to, to print cod piece might take a little bit more than a day but um because that's the third biggest piece on this set um but outside of that uh everything else uh it should print relatively quickly it means I can get this done in less than a month, so I can get this done by South by Southwest, uh, and get it, and definitely get it done by RTX. But if I can't find new employment or something to way to supplement my income, who knows when I'll be able to finish this? Um, I, I also plan on doing some freelance prints, so I might have to stop printing the armor for a while to work on something for someone else. So especially if they're going to pay me to do it, so there could be time in between there, so I don't know. Right now, that's kind of up in the air. That's kind of like the de current development that's uh, going on right now, but I do have enough filament left. And here's, I this started this at a fresh roll. So I started this at a fresh roll. There's a little bit less than half of it left. Um, so I would have enough to print the chest plate, and then that would be... But I would only have enough to finish it, printing the chest plate. Um, I want to get as many pieces of the armor, uh, well, the back plate, as many pieces of the armor done with what little filament I have, because I, I have this this left, and then I have a second wheel, um, so I would like to get as many pieces of the armor done as possible, I would like to get the leg armor done next, um, the back, so the back plate can wait, um, because there's one thing I do want to the back plate, so one thing I don't want to avoid that it, I think I'm gonna make the back plate the last piece that I print. Honestly, it is a high. It is probably has the highest detail out of any of these pieces, um, just because of the just the back itself. Um, and I want. I don't want to rush that print at all. Um, I'm working on an orient. I'm trying to. I'm having a support issue where I'm getting a very thin support at a place where I need a not so thin support. So, but, and that's because of the way I have the, uh, the, the, uh, have it angled, but I have it angled that way to provide me the maximum, uh, uh, maximum amount of detail without having supports being built all over my model armor. So I don't want supports being built on the armor itself. I just want supports being built to support, uh, the overall form. So I have it at a slight angle. Um, this one I print it's like straight stacked up. Um, I'll be printing that one at an angle. I just gotta play around with it. Uh, it's gonna require like it'll require a lot of material, um, of course. So I'm going to need to um, definitely I need to find the side. And it's like I can get more pieces of the art. All in all, it's still gonna be the same amount of material at the end product. It's just a matter of how much can I get done and work on in between time when I'm when I can't afford filament? So I'll have this and I can get a bunch of pieces done, put a bunch of pieces of the armor done, and that's less pieces I have to get done later on. So uh, we'll um 
so we'll see. Um, like this is gonna be a very short video. Um, I would normally start the video at the beginning of the print, but I do have to clean it to do. I'm also kind of tired and stuff, and I don't know if I'm gonna put the print on right now. Um, I might put it on tonight before I go into work because I'll be live streaming it. Remember, 10 p.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, I don't know if I'll be like I, said, I don't guarantee I'll be streaming every night. Uh, I finally figured out how to how to um, MacGyver uh, the stream for Xbox um, to so I can now stream and I can have party chat and everything else uh, while streaming to my PC and being able to uh, use OBS with it as well. So uh, on my days off at least, I'm going to try and start streaming Halo, Monster Hunter, Warframe, whatever I'm in the mood for uh, while the print's going. So you'll have the webcam trained on the print with my awesome webcam stand. If you guys don't know what this is, this is a this is highly sophisticated piece of equipment. Uh, this is, there's no better stand on the market for webcams. This is the Mirror's Edge collector's edition box with a sewing machine, actually a really good sewing machine. Uh, on top of that, followed by $30 amp. It's <laughs> a popsicle sticks. That's my retainer. But, <clears throat> um, yeah, so, he, yeah. Sturdy, doesn't even move at all. Like, no shaking whatsoever. Perfect for, perfect mount for the webcam. Just stick it here in the corner where it teeters on the edge. So, and then just aim it, and you're good to go. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's a short video, um, shortest video I've done yet. Um, you can catch, uh, like I said, I'll have in the description below, there'll be links to Instagram and stuff where I'll post updates, progress report, like update. Uh, you'll see pictures of it mid print if you don't catch the live stream, you can see something. Like I said, I'll, if anything happens in the meantime, I will update you. Um, Right now, I'm working on some... Ooh, I wanted to show these guys. I don't want to show these to you guys last time, but I forgot to do it. Um, I got some Hero Forge minis, and I printed them on my SLA printer. And they turned out super well. Like, ooh, too much light. Too much light. So. This is Akita. She turned out extremely well. Yeah, uh, they see that support in their hiding support. But, uh, turned out very well, turned out very clean. Um, the, uh, really like these. Because my, my main thing is, is, like, so I'm working with a friend of mine where he's working on a, his own tabletop RPG. And he wants to do his own minis. Uh, and I'll be printing minis. And I've been, I've been working on some models and stuff. I've been modeling bows. Um, and stuff actually that was my computer off. I could show I could show you guys the bows. Uh, to kind of make this video longer, but uh, so my goal was to because we're doing our own custom minis, but I do want to be able to make sure that I can print at a professional quality. So I use the Hero Forge as kind of a guy because these are custom minis and his minis aren't going to be quite as cust they're not going to be like fully customizable like Hero Forges. Um, but this is a good base for three D printed minis. Uh, to gauge by, so I just try and determine how much detail I could get out of it, working around playing with supports. Um, this, like this one, was an interesting one because it had a lot of fur on it, the fur trim on the armor and everything else. So that made it a bit of a challenge for placing supports. Uh, and then I can't move with this armor on; I can't reach. And this is Captain Champion. His name is his title, or his title is his name. Um, he turned out really well. I really like him. And, uh, yeah. Not, compared to, compared to their standard detail, uh, I think mine turned out actually better than their standard detail minis. Um, as for their HQ minis, their, uh, their high quality minis, uh, they do have a level, they are more detailed than this. They did, they did turn out better, more detail wise, but I did notice there are some issues with them that mine don't have, and that is theirs 
is warped. Um, like the Lance, because I, I printed, I ordered Captain Champion for a game a long time ago, a different pose, but the same, same miniature. Uh, and the Lance was all bent and everything else, and that was heat warping, um, due to whatever process that they, whatever process they, they used, that, that's how it came out. Um, it was also incredibly fragile. Um, he is not so fragile. He's hit the ground like six or seven times already. His Lance hasn't broken, his sword hasn't broken. His arms have been broken. He, he is incredibly durable. Um, so the I said these turned out really well. Um, it's a nice in, compared comparatively they're nice in between. They're definitely more high quality than your standard Reaper Bones plastic mini. They're not quite as detailed as your metal mini, uh, your metal cast minis, but uh, in arguably some 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 metal cast minis aren't that great, but uh. The higher the higher quality ones, uh, like uh, Chronoscope uh, metal minis, which are super detailed, um, like these don't quite re these aren't quite on that level, but uh, these are good in between. These are definitely a step above the rest um, as far as print quality goes. Like I said, these are pure forge minis. Uh, we have our we ha we'll be having our own minis, uh, so. Uh, but I've been working on weapons, uh, so while... Here's on. Pardon my bad. Mess, everything's a mess. Um, oh yeah. Uh, so, um... So, here are these bows. Um, I'm working on, so I've been working on these for minis. Um, you, so we have the, uh, this is a compound bow. Sorry, it's, it's hard to move in this room. Uh, so this is a comp, uh, a, it's based off of a comp, a compound bow, so you have the wheel and the pulley. Um, it doesn't, if we're looking at intended function, it's not supposed to function as one, it's just supposed to look like it. So we have this one, and then we have our basic bow. It's basic, nothing fancy. Oop. Then we have our heavy bow. So essentially I made this, I just scaled up the, the basic bow. Um, and then I added metal plating on it um, to make a heavy bow. And then over here we have our uh, long bow. You see it has the, the aiming rod on it. That, some competition bows have. So this is our long bow. This is our heavy bow. Basic bow. These are all scaled to Kita's model. Um, got some crossbows here. So, uh, finished these last night. Uh, these are, so you have your hand crossbow, your basic crossbow, and your heavy crossbow. And, uh, I uh, need to do a little more detail the, on them. I am going to do some sort of wood grading on these because uh, I feel like they're large enough to tra for that wood grading to translate the bows. I don't know about, um, but I do want to add a little bit more uh, to this to kind of make it um, maybe do a wrap around the, uh, some wraps around the handles. Um, just give that a little extra bit of detail. Um, so, uh, do I have my up? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. so, so this is, um, this is, I'm more, so I'm working on three more bows. Um, this is already done, I just haven't done renders of it yet. But uh, this is the uh, composite bow. It's like a short bow, composite bow. It's not that uh, big in scale to, say, the... Where's the basic bow? Where are you, basic bitch? There you are. So yeah, it's, a little bit, it, it's definitely smaller than that. Uh -huh. So... And you can be scaled up a little bit, manually just scaled a little bit based on the hand size. Like I said, I'm, I'm scaling all these to uh, 
uh, Kita's model. So, transcend Z, there we go. So I'm, I'm scaling all these to her. So this might be scaled a little bit just because uh, her hands are bigger. Um, Cause like this is appropriate size, but now this may need to be go up a little bit. Um, the next bow that I'm working on, uh, or that I've already finished, is shield bow. So, let me turn off the wireframe so you can see it. So this is shield bow. The idea is that it has a shield on the front of it. So, uh, uh, so yeah, um, just a unique looking bow for the miniatures, uh, lots of different designs. I have one had the basic bow and the, and then the short, uh, composite bow because not everyone wants those flourished embellish embellishments on the bows. Um, I do have one more, one more bow to make. Um, it's going to be a magic-based bow, so like um, it's, it's going to be a mana caster. So the idea is that you use magic ammunition instead of actual arrows. Um, and it's going to have a very angular, almost crystalline design to it. Um, that's the last one I need to make, and then I'm done. Uh, I'll need to go into uh, ZBrush, sculpt in the detail for the wood graining. Uh, I'm going to do wood graining on this one. This one has not going to have wood graining. Uh, uh, this I need to do... Uh, where's the scale? Zoom. So I'm going to need to go in and do uh, cuts on the metal um, on this. This is also going to have a wood graining. This one is going... If I can maybe have a wood graining on it, um, I will. Um, so, these will be, uh, I'm going to do test prints, maybe not today, but probably tomorrow. Uh, I'll do test prints of just these to see how well they, they print at size. Like I said, I scaled them based off of, based off of Hero Forge minis, because uh, they're optim, the details on, and the exaggerations are optimized to be able to get good solid prints, so I'm hoping that these will be, using that as my standard for my design as far as like what I need for scale and how far I need to exaggerate the forms. Uh, we'll, uh, uh, we'll see about that. Uh, so, again, chest plate turned out really nice. Everyone's calling it my push-up bra at work. Uh, but, um, yeah. Uh, Fits fine. It's a little bit snug, but uh, like I said, I'm gonna, I'm, I can modify it uh, better to suit my form because like I can have, I can use a heat gun to warp it. I'm gonna use elastic band on the inside, um, on the under the arm, so I'm not gonna have uh, any sort of like big piece of plastic sitting there. Uh, shoulders are gonna be held by magnets, um, of course, holding it in the back. I'm also going to be now in the back the back. I'm going to embed ma magnets in the back so I can put on a weapon. So a magnetized weapon so I can actually hold it there holstered. Um, I'll be printing off a, your state, your basic, I think it's MR-15, uh, is what the Halo Assault Rifle is called. Uh, I'm going to be printing off that. Um, I found a really good, uh, um, when I get to that, I'll, I'll put the links and everything else, but I found a model, um, uh, someone uh, from an artist who created a very very detailed piece with like a hundred screws and everything else but it has springs and stuff so it has removable clip um, sli uh, the slider everything else trigger um, all these movable different movable parts um, layered on top of each other it looks really good really nice it's gonna definitely be a pain to put together I'm definitely going to have to take my time with that one as far as printing because I, if I try to print a too thick a layer and too quickly, I'm going to get warping and I'm just going to have to do more fine tuning and sanding and blah, 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 in order to get it, the pieces to fit together properly. And it's just, it just may end up ruining the piece because of how much it relies on everything being put together. So I'm going to get that. So um, that's going to actually videos as long as the last one. Uh, now, but uh, so that's basically what I've been working on on the side while I'm waiting for this to get done. The weather hasn't been agreeable for me to be able to paint the helmet yet. Uh, 
the Bondo doesn't require me to have proper temp, like it doesn't require a specific temperature because it, it bonds, uh, because it cures chemically. It doesn't require temperature to cure, uh, whereas paint does. So, uh, the weather being cold and wet just hasn't been agreeable for me to do it. Because I was going to do it over my weekend. I was hoping to have it painted now. Be able to show off, but that's not going to happen until the weather turns more in my favor. But I will be starting the print. I'll probably start off printing the shin, uh, the calf armor, the thigh and the, the knees and everything else. I'll work my way up uh, and then do the arms. And then I'll do the longest print pieces last. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll have more, I'll be, cons also big thing too is those pieces, I wasn't expecting to, how thin this was. So if you look at the old ones, I kept it, um, look how thin this wall is. This is a half the thickness of the wall of the helmet, a little bit less than half. Um, I wasn't expecting that, um, to, I wasn't expecting it to be that thin in some areas, uh, I kind of kept this on as a reminder. Um, but yeah, this was the size difference on this is pretty is pretty noticeable. Like, look at that. Like, if I if I had this, th this is where it would be sitting right now. If like if I, this was fully printed, this is where it would be sitting. I scaled it down to ninety two percent. So, if I had left it original, it would have been bigger. But then I wouldn't have been able to like you already see where it's poking my. Sh that at the inside of my bicep, uh, I wouldn't have that maneuverability to move my arms past here. I ha it had to be scaled down. There's no way. Um, so, uh, yeah. All in all, um, this is uh, uh fucking. Uh, for what was it gonna be? Oh, um, so yeah. Uh, I might, I'm gonna put those off, those first, because those are gonna require less support material. Like, I'm not gonna have this big mess. The shin, calf, they barely have any, uh, support material on them. Uh, so, I'm not gonna have to worry about any of that. So. Uh. Oop. Battery, my phone is dying. So, uh, I'm gonna cut this here, uh. So keep an eye on my, check out my Twitch at night, something to put on the background is white noise. Um, I'll be, um, keep an eye on my, uh, on Twitter, I'll post, if you guys follow me on Twitter, uh, I'll be posting, uh, the updates, um, when I go live for streams. So following on Twitter, Instagram, you'll be able to see in progress shots as it prints, maybe some short clips of it printing, uh, as at interesting stages, uh. So feel free to check those out. Uh, so like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in episode 6 when whatever I decide to print is done printing. Uh, and if I actually get to work on the helmet. Whichever, whichever one comes first. Um, I won't be streaming the helmet, like actually streaming or filming working on the helmet because I'll be working with paints and chemicals and I don't want to get that all over my phone. Or my, web, or my webcam, so uh, I'm definitely going to be doing it in my room. I'm going to be doing it in the garage where it's well ventilated because you want to make sure you're well ventilated. Uh, an area when you're working with Bondo because Bondo has a very chemical smell, and of course, you're working with spray paint, so that's uh, particles in the air. You don't want to get those in your lungs, and you don't want those lingering around because of the odor. Uh, so, I won't be doing that, of course, up in my room, but I will be doing it down in the garage. So, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'll keep you guys posted on everything going on. Uh, and everything, so, uh, catch you guys later.